class, we were, one of the things we were ending with was we were talking about Peter. And uh, <clears throat> Peter um, <clears throat> was making this hard stand for Jesus. He, he drew out a sword. He cut off Malchus's ear. He was, we're going to protect Jesus from dying, from laying down his life for others. We're going to see, we're the protectors of the life, not knowing what the life is, that it's a lamb inside of there. And sometimes we get that way. We can even get that way with the, the truth that we know and that the Lord has shared with us, that we're going to, we get hard and we stand against others and we confront and we do all that kind of stuff. Uh, in a spirit that is not that and the best thing to do the best thing you could possibly do is lay down your life I mean if they're not open You know just lay down your life put it in the hands of the Lord You know there's so many examples of this where we just we we miss the opportunity for being with Christ and him crucified in this in a situation like that You know you you see that they're not going to receive it. You can just say well, okay, they're not going to get it and walk off or well I'm not going to push and walk off but try laying down your life try saying I give up my you know right and my what I think I know and I'm going to be with Jesus in death for their sake I mean but we miss so many opportunities to be with Christ and him crucified because we're too busy standing up for the message of Christ and Him crucified, and that's wrong, and that's not His spirit. That's not that doesn't please Him. That's the exact opposite of Him. That's beast. No matter how much, you know. I mean, look, Peter pulled out a sword and struck a guy, and Jesus, Jesus stick, picks up the ear, sticks it back on him, and says, "Stop that." You know, He doesn't re rebuke Malchus for coming to get him. He doesn't rebuke them. He's going to go with them. He came to die. And I don't know, we just, we can get off onto the, the message or the, the teaching and miss the spirit of the thing and, and, do, and, and miss opportunities all the time because we think in terms of big events, you know. We're on an outreach, I'm gonna lay down my life. Or we're doing the, a conference, I'm gonna lay down my life. We don't see it in just little tiny things where you know, someone that, that we love could actually be offended over something and we're pressing because we're right or it's the truth or you, you see what I'm saying? I hope you see what I'm saying. But you can be with the Lamb. You can be out from Him. You can be of His spirit and His nature and you can, instead of just stopping or, you know, going, okay, well, no need pressing this. How about I'm going I'm to go into death with Him and by that spirit release something that may you know whether it's a hundred years from now I don't care may eventually affect you know them or someone else anyway we were um, we were talking about the book of James last class we were talking about how every good and perfect gift comes from above come comes down every good and perfect gift that is from above comes down and we uh, talked about Abraham's faith, and we discussed how uh, in James uh, chapter 2 that it wasn't, that when, when he says in um, uh, Genesis 15, you know, that your faith is counted to you for righteousness, James says that wasn't fulfilled until he went to the altar. It wasn't fulfilled. That's powerful. I mean, that's powerful, but, but it's not, it shouldn't be a surprise to us, to us anyway, because we understand the altar. The altar is everything. And that God, you know, I mean, Jesus will forever have nail scars in his hands, you know, as a reminder to us, you know. I mean, when I pray for someone now or they're going through something or something, I say, Jesus, just lay your nail scarred hands on them. Or touch us with your nail-scarred hand. I don't just say, well, you're, because, you know, we say that before we even understood the altar. And all we mean is, you know, I need a touch from God instead of the lamb. I need 
his spirit, his nature, his way, and I want to give all due and glory to the lamb on the throne too, not just the one on the cross. And the lamb, the, remember the same? It's the same who descended, the same ascended up. And that's the same spirit in the same nature in the same way. And I want to acknowledge him in, in his heart. See, we say, I want to acknowledge him in spirit and in truth. Okay, what's that mean? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, we get all charismatic or something about it, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that, and I may do that. But I'm, that's not to, to acknowledge him in spirit is to acknowledge his spirit, his nature, his way. To worship him in spirit is to worship the lamb on the throne, the slain lamb, not just the lamb, the slain lamb. I looked and saw a lamb as though it had been slaughtered, is the original Greek there. So anyway, so we're talking about this thing of fulfilling and of perfecting, that his faith wasn't fulfilled and, and uh, it wasn't made perfect until the altar. Turn with me, we're still on that theme and we're still, as it were, in the book of Revelation, but turn with me to Hebrews chapter two and, and uh, verse nine and 10. <clears throat> and uh, Hebrews two, nine and 10, uh, tells us that uh, even Jesus who came, he came to this earth and he came on behalf of God, right? Jesus came on behalf of God. But what this scripture is gonna tell us is that um, it's, it wasn't perfect until he suffered, okay? <clears throat> but we see Jesus, this is verse nine and 10, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. All right, well you know the verse in front of this, don't you? that he's resurrected, he's da 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 da, but that's not the Jesus we're looking at. Y'all see it in verse eight? But that's not the Jesus we see. We see the one that yes, he was, he did ascend, but he's still this selfless lamb. <clears throat> and, um, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory now, that he by the grace of God should taste of death for every man, there it is again, grace, law and grace, law and grace. Grace he tasted of death. Was made a little lower, um, crowned with glory now, that he by the grace of God should taste of death for every man, verse 10, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. There's that word perfect again. Every good and perfect gift. Uh, his faith was not perfect or was perfected when he offered Isaac on the altar. All of it, the same word. We're looking, we think perfect is sinless perfection. That's not what perfection is. It is the completion of something. It is the fulfilling of that thing. You've made it perfect now. You've, you've, you've put the cherry on the top because you didn't just talk about it. You didn't just know all about it, know all the deep things and could chart it and everything. You lived it and that's my spirit, see. I mean, how much, how much happier could you make Jesus by being one with him in that, that image, that same spirit, that, you know? Um, so, uh, in order to bring sons to glory, it was fitting that it, brought, it be brought through selfless giving. In order to bring many sons to glory, it was fitting that it be brought about by lamb life, selfless giving. Um, again, I'll read this. The word perfect here is not sinless perfection, but again, like Abraham, when he offered Isaac, it was not complete until the altar had been applied. 
It was not complete until the altar had been applied. And no matter what heights we are brought to in knowledge in the Lord, and that's what Isaac was before the altar, it is not perfected until we're willing to come down from it and make it an altered son. Um, Romans 8, if you want to turn there with me, Romans 8, 17 and 18. <clears throat> Verse 17, <clears throat> and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. woo Exaltation, that's what I want. I want to get, you know, I want to get everything Jesus has got for me. Well, he's got a cross with your name on it. <laughs> you know, take up my cross and follow me. <clears throat> Um, notice it says, and if children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if. If so be, we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. See, there's one spirit that God raised, and that was Christ, the Lamb of God, and we're one with him. If, uh, if we're Christians, I don't know if we're one with him. We just believe in him, and you know what I'm saying. I mean, I believe you're saved, and everybody's safe. I'm just saying that he raised a certain spirit. He raised his son that was the Lamb of God. And what's it say in Ephesians? That we, ra we were raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We were raised up in him. And he was raised up and made to sit together. And who's sitting there on the throne in the book of Revelation? We find out the real nature and not just some sort of a, of a well, you defeated him by being raised. And I'm, I'm just, I'll say it again. He didn't defeat anything by being raised in that sense. Through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death, the devil. Through death, the old man was crucified. Through death, the law was defeated. Through death, each and every one of those is this one down here that descended. That same one ascended, so I want you to worship that. That's God. That's what he would say to you. <clears throat> um, so, it uh, goes on to say in Romans, <clears throat> if so be, well, I like this, now we are heirs if. So be, but more importantly, now are we children if what does that mean if children then heirs but it's about being children he's he's putting the emphasis on children if children then heirs we're in the family we're of the same nature we have the family spirit we have the spirit of the lamb if we have manifested in real life situations. That's proof. Now we're children, if you, you manifest it in, in his same self-giving way and he can look and go, come here, you know, come here, I love you, I love you. But, you know, the other, the alternative in the book of Revelation, it all has shaken down to, to beast and lamb and those who follow beast and those who follow lamb, it's, it can look good. It can look right. I mean, a whole bunch of people are following the beast because he's making it available where they can buy and sell and do all this stuff and whatever, but his motive is selfish. And miracles are being done. It says that. He deceived them by reason of the miracles that he did. Miracles are being done, and people can go. And remember, the, the false prophet made fire fall from heaven, and everybody goes, oh, my God, you know, and you go, that, and I bet you anything, somebody says that that's just like the prophets, just like Elijah. He made fire fall from heaven. It's not like Elijah. Elijah's fire fell on an altar and a sacrifice every time, and we're so wrapped up in the miracle part of it that we don't see it's missing the most important elements. 
the altar. It's just fire. Somebody's shooting off fire. You know? Woohoo! The, the, the uh, false prophet knows how to work fireworks. But it has nothing to do with, with the Lamb of God, the selfless giving of the Lamb. <clears throat> For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, not to us. You know, people always have this story of, well, uh, St. Peter's at the pearly gates, and, uh, you know, when you die, you'll walk up to the pearly gate, and Peter, St. Peter will go, why should I let you in heaven? And you'll say, because I went to church, and I read the book, and I folded the hands. <laughs> and I did, I did everything a good Buddhist would do. I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know. And, and he'll go, okay, come right in. You know, your mansion's going to be right over there. And we're going, all right, it's right next door to Jesus. Next door to Jesus, really. You don't want to become the habitation of God. We'll see that here in the book of Revelation. We've made it into fairy tales on that sense, because that's a fairy tale. That's not the reality God's trying to bring us into. <clears throat> and, you know, as soon as I say that, somebody goes, well, then what about heaven? And where am I going to live? <laughs> really, see? I wouldn't be talking about there until you get some of these things settled. Children, if so be, never mind. <clears throat> and he says, I reckon that the sufferings, are, this is nothing, this is nothing of what of, of his nature is going to be revealed in us. My God, the glory of his nature, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I wrote, um, the proof that we are children or in the family is because we're, we willingly share in sufferings that liberate others. It's not about, it cannot be about us. We can't make everything about us or we're missing the mark. So you say missing the mark is hitting sin. No, missing the mark is missing Jesus and making it about sin. <laughs> you know? I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. Do you want Jesus? I don't, I'm not, don't talk about that right now. I just don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. So you want to be perfect so that Jesus goes, well, you're not sinning. You're pretty cool. You know, if that, if he just wanted sinless creatures that didn't sin, he'd be happy with the angels. You know, he go, I, I got what I want here. You know? But we're, we still have problems. We still have wrong motivations. But if our heart is pointed at the right target, we're not missing the mark. And the target is Christ, not us. We think Jesus got an arrow aimed at us trying to, we're the target, we're the goal. I'm the goal. You know, if, you know when, the, when the heart turns, then we look into his face, then we're changed into that same image. That's when it happens, and it's not going to, the change isn't going to be, take place by focusing within. It comes by focusing on him. Holy Spirit, open my eyes that I may see Jesus. And continually do that. Make that my heart's desire, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and from there with him forever. That's a heart condition, not a theological embrace. <clears throat> All right, so Jesus expected the disciples on the, the road to Emmaus to know this. They're confused at the cross, and he goes, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? And don't you understand the pattern? Don't you understand my way? Don't you understand who I am? Why are you, you know, he even, he even called the understanding apart from the cross, apart from this nature, this lamb, hard-heartedness. What did you, he died, and they're talking to him. He's not here. He's right here. He's gone. The cross robbed us. 
I don't know how long he went with that. But he, he, he finally straightened them out. Oh, ye, you know. <clears throat> uh, turn with me to 1 Peter 4, verse 1 and 2. First Peter four. First Peter four, verse one and two. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, okay, so that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of God. All right, so <clears throat> I just wrote down, therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourself in the same mind. What mind? Let this mind be in you. This is what he's trying to impart. Arm yourself, I like that. We need to be armed with it, not just have thoughts of it. You know, and, and it's one thing to, in class, it is real easy or in a church service to get real spiritualized, not spiritual, but spiritualized, and think that we have something. We won't even know whether we got it or not until, until the crisis comes. That's when you learn, you know. And it'll teach you either you don't or you do, and neither one's bad. I mean, you know, if you, if you fail, like Peter, fail, totally fail the Lord. And, you know, Jesus shows up after the resurrection and says, feed my sheep. On what? <laughs> I got nothing. But he did. He did do it because he found out in the resurrection that that was his life that was raised not just his savior and he said i can do this if you're in me that's the only way can't you see peter saying that you know i'm convinced now <laughs> so, this is the only way christ in me but i'm for this this looks like a plan now because <laughs> i yeah, <clears throat> and I'll tell you what, that's what happened to me. When I came to the Lord and I began to see that it was, it, I could be dead, this was exciting for me, <laughs> that I could be dead and Christ could be my life. I said, well, there's hope in this. That's right. You know, and then the Spirit goes, yeah, Christ in you. <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> that's what I meant. That's my hope. It's not, my hope is not in me. And it's not in you. Just a reminder. Because <laughs> you'll fail God too, just like I have. And then that's okay. Find Christ in a deeper way. Find him deeper in you, not just in a deeper knowledge way, but to have him formed in you. <clears throat> Romans uh, 12. Turn there with me. Verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, so we could say that uh, Paul is going, I beseech you, please, for the love of God, present your bodies. But he's saying, I beseech you by the mercies of God, which took place at the cross, that imparted his life that forgave you of all your sins and wiped away your old nature by the mercies of God. I, this is all, this is not, he's, he's saying, this is not hard. <laughs> I 
for him. But it's going to take a death. It's going to take presenting your, not just your body, but that's what it's gotten to at this stage in Romans. Spirit first came first, then soul and body. And uh, let me just read here. If you do not conform to the pattern of this world, if you don't conform to this mind of the world, which is self-centeredness, but you get a renewed lamb mind, then, and in parentheses, and only then, will you be able to test and prove what is really according to his will. It is because only then can you see from his point of view, which is, if anyone come after me, the lamb, come after me, the lamb, because he's talking about taking up the cross. <laughs> if anybody comes after me, the lamb, let the cross be daily and not just a one-time historical event. And the dailiness is, again, the way we, we kind of spelled it out earlier. It is opportunities to go instead of just going, okay, no big deal. All right, you, you've done nothing eternal by doing that, but if you say, you know what? In this situation, I lay down my life so that something of death may bring forth and spring forth as life for you. Death worketh in me, but life in you. And you're fine, you can do that all day long. I mean, there are multitudes of opportunities. But if our minds are not fastened with the nail of the cross to that cross, then we're just living a Christian life on earth. We're just living down here trying to do good, and what about this, and I don't know, and you know, well, God, show me what to do, and he's going, I've showed you what to do. You've been in class for 100 years. <laughs> Let this mind be in you, you know? Oh. Oh, that, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> I want to read that again, can I? If you do not conform to the pattern of this world, meaning that, that pattern of mind, be not conformed to this world, which is self-centeredness, but you get a renewed lamb mind, then and only then will you be able to test and to prove what is really according to his will. It is because only then can you see from his point of view, which is, if anyone come after me, anyone come after the Lamb, let the cross be daily and not just a one-time historical event that happened a long time ago. Get it worked into your life, you know? Get it worked into your life. And that's the point. That's the point we're at in, in Revelation, I mean, in Romans 12. That's why he's dealing, you, you read all the way through 12. He's dealing with outward issues now. The, everything he said that was true in Romans 6, that you are dead, the old man is crucified. Everything that he said in Romans 7 in relationship to proving that to you as a, a old wretched man that you are, Everything that he's shown you in Romans 8 of his life now being your life and that this is what you trust in, this is what you conform to. Um, all of that is supposed to have gotten in us. We're on a journey and all of that has been worked in us and we get to Romans 12 and he goes, okay, now let's talk about how this is manifested. Manifested. It's only a manifestation. Manifestation isn't hard when you got the real thing at work in you. Manifestation is really hard if you make it rules. So you want law or grace, or rather law or lamb. It's all in how you see it. It's all in how you perceive God. If he's still a lawgiver to you, then you'll see it in law. If, he, if you have seen past Jesus of Nazareth and you look into the eternal that, that, that John saw when he said, that which was from the beginning, not the beginning, because he said in the beginning was the word, word. So he's not talking about the day Jesus showed up in the river of Jordan. 
that which is from the beginning we have seen. We have handled of the word of life, not just, well, Jesus spoke some good stuff to us. We're going to follow his teachings. Big difference. Big difference. <clears throat> so, Luke says, saying the Son of Man must suffer many things. So this is Jesus telling, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. I love these scriptures. But, but this is Jesus talking when they're expecting a kingdom to come and everything's going to be really cool because he's going to have a throne and they're fighting over who's going to be sitting at the right hand and the left. And he's talking and he says, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected. I don't want to be rejected. Let me just finish this off. And be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain. And the Holy Spirit, when I was in Bible school, <clears throat> it was just a rock and a bench there made out of a tree stone. That was my desk. Noah walked by. Not this one. <laughs> it's a long time ago. I remember, I remember when the Holy Spirit was talking to me. I remember this, and I'll never forget it because it was eternal, and Deb might even remember it when I spoke it to her. And we weren't married then. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit started dealing with me, and he said, and some of you have heard this, but he started dealing with me because there was a bunch of us that were around. We were Bible school students, and we were excited, you know. And, <clears throat> and one of them said, I want to be like Paul, you know. And, and another one said, I want to be like David, you know. And we were Bible school students and stuff. And I said, I'd like to be like Jesus. <laughs> and I want to be conformed to his image. Uh, and the Holy Spirit said to me, well, then... When you read it, don't read yourself into uh, Boaz or Abraham or, da -da -da or anybody else there. Read yourself into me when I spoke. And I said, yes, sir. And these are the first scriptures he brought me to. And it says, the Son of Man must suffer. And he's going, That's, you're, you're one with me. This is, this is you. This is your life. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain. And I went, you know, right after this, the sentence doesn't end with that. It says, and be raised on the third day. But I, I never saw that part. All I saw is, you know, if Christ is my life, I'm not trying to be like Peter or David or Dedder. Christ, that same guy, the same, is raised in me this is probably going to happen to me. That religious people might turn against me. That I might be rejected. I kind of left Bible school already aware that something bad could happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I kind of was already in tune with that, realizing it's, all, it's not because of me. It's because of him. And not because... Well, it's Jesus in me, so people are going to hate you, you know. That's the way we, we, we think that. Well, it's Jesus in you, so people are going to hate you. No, it's Jesus in me, and he's going to put himself in that situation to die for the very ones who murder him. So that they can live. He could have got out of that. He's not going, yeah, this is my sad future on the earth. I'm going to suffer many things and be rejected. <laughs> Pray for me, you 12. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll be all right now. <laughs> Y'all run along now. <laughs> I'll get with the Father. <laughs> we wonder why he separated himself, you know what I mean? He's like, oh boy. <laughs> but you know, 
that's kind of how we think. Or we think we would see that not in Jesus, but we would see that in us. It's Jesus in me, therefore they're going to mistreat me. That's all we get out of it. It's not the cross for us. It's not being one with him. It's not take up my cross and follow me like it, it's talking about here. It's not that at all. There's no cross in it. It's, well, Jesus is in me and everyone hates me. And I hate y'all too because you're of the world. And I'm not. You know, or something. Self-righteousness arises or something. Self-pity, self-righteousness, it's all self. You know? And it's pitiful. Can I get amen? <laughs> That's just pitiful. But if it is this spirit and this nature, you know why you're going to be rejected. You know why you're going to suffer many things. You're going to do it for the very one. You're going to do it for the elders and the chief priests and the scribes. And you're going to, be, you're going to do it for the, the people that are mocking you while you're hanging up there. And you're going to say, Father, forgive them. But you will never probably ever be hung on an actual wood cross it's going to come in a form you think not the lord's going to come at a time in a way that you think not and it'll be the lamb of god ready to lay down his life through you and you'll look and you'll go this is just mean people yeah yeah that's why you died for them they're just mean people. They need Jesus. The, this life in me loves them. I don't love them, but Jesus does. And the more I conform to him, I will love them even in their worst. <laughs> always, it's always funny to me when I'm sharing and I say that. And it's funny to realize who I'm looking at when I say that. It's never meant to be that person. But you, you know, your eyes always land on somebody and they're going, what? is he talking about me? I'm talking about all of us. It just happened and that person didn't notice it, but I, I noticed where my eyes landed at that moment. It's hilarious over the years. Sorry. Okay, so. Uh, and he said to them all, I love this, you know, this after he says, I'll, I'll go through all this stuff and I'll be slain. And he said to them all, if any man come after me, do you see that? Immediately after he says, the son of man's going to suffer and be rejected and, you know, be slain by top religious leaders. And he said to them all, if anyone come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me in this way. Follow lamb, follow me in this way that I just said to you. He immediately said, it's, it's that let this mind be in you. It's like, it's, I, this isn't just about saving the world from sin. This isn't just about the son, God showing up down here. I'm looking for a bride. I'm looking for a wife. I'm looking for one after my kind. And so if this is true of me, it'll be true of you. But let it be true of you on the same basis that it's true of me. Only oneness can bring that about because we all, we all fall short. But it can be brought about. Just as smooth as a, as a vine can flow into a branch. Just that smooth. It can be that way. But there's a, you know, we hold on. You know, it's like the, the, the branches. He's already grafted in and we're holding on going, I don't know, there's a wind, the wind. It's going to blow me loose. You know, and it's not going to blow you loose, you know. You know, and you will go, I'm just a little twig. You know, we all this stuff goes through our minds, you know. And we're fighting the process instead of going, just hit me with the juice, man. Your life. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow in me by your life. <clears throat> But see, we can't get past and be, suffer many things and be rejected. <laughs> so it doesn't, you know, we can go, yeah, that's right, amen, suffer many things and reject it. Really? Let's let it flow? That's what you meant? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what you meant? Thank God I don't hear that stuff. I would be scared to be in this church, in this Bible school. <laughs> 
And then uh, I'm probably going to have to come back and finish this off because I have a whole bunch on this little scripture here. So I'll just finish reading the scripture and we'll, we'll end it. Uh, he said, uh, verse 23, and he said to them all, <clears throat> how many? If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. So he didn't say, lose your life for my cause. It's for his sake. I do this for your sake. I, I, want you, I want you to get the bride of your heart. I want you to get one after your kind. I want to be conformed to your image in such a manner that it will please you for your sake. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same just saved it. Because you can't lose with this kind of death. Did you know that? You can't lose. There's a resurrection. And it's him and the life. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your spirit and your continued um, uh, moving by your spirit upon us. And we thank you that you're not going to give up. You're going to keep going. You're not going to tire of of reaching out and dying and giving yourself, uh, you're going to work toward the end that you had in your heart from the beginning. And your plan will be fulfilled. It will come to pass. And so we rest in you and not in ourselves. And we thank you for your word. May it be seed that falls into this ground, and may we be good ground that it can take root and spring up as life. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're, we're dismissed.